Hello, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. In the last video we created our first NPC for our game. His name is Bob, he also has an evil clone called Z-Bob. Now, in this video, we're going to give Bob a quest. We're going to do this using the um, using the system game state variable that we created before. So what we need to do is we need something for, you, for Bob to want you to collect. So if we just go over here back to our sprites, back to objects. This time let's create a sprite. I don't know what it's going to be yet so we're not going to categorize it. We're just going to go edit sprite, create from strip. And this time we're going to load in that uh, RPG Maker VX RTP tile set. So let's have a look through here for something that Bob wants us to collect. So if we scroll down to the objects, let's look for... What have we got? We don't have any good objects. Okay, Bob is an Englishman and he wants a cup of tea. So we're going to get you to find a teapot and a cup of tea. It sounds like a good as any quest. So in this one we say number of images 1, image width 32 by 32. And then we just try and position this box as close as we can to being on that teapot. I think I've got that spot on 640 by 1568. Select OK to import it. Now we've imported the teapot. Let's call this sprite underscore tea. And we'll center this one. Now what we need to do, we'll just categorize that. We're going to call this misc. And we'll put that in here. So this quest is going to be called Tea Party. Let's call it that. So you're going to need to travel through this forest to find the tea. The legendary tea. So let's move Bob over here. Bob's just going to be off to the left somewhere. Let's move the hero over here. Now under the, under the objects, let's create a group, we'll call this quests. Under that we'll call it another group, we'll call it NPC quests. Under that we'll create another group and we'll call this NPC underscore Bob. And inside of that we'll create the object. We'll call this object T. This time we'll attach the sprite from objects misc sprite T. It does use physics. Collision shape is going to be a circle. Let's zoom in on that and we'll make the collision shape a little bit smaller. This time we're going to set the, den the density to 0 0.1. Yeah, that should work. Actually, no, let's make it sensor. We'll change it to sensor. What this does is this means it doesn't actually follow uh, regular physics and the collision event will fire only once rather than you'll be able to push it around. I think that's what it means. If it's not sensor, it's kinematic and we can just swap that over later. So in our map, let's create a quest NPC object T. Let's put that over here. Let's put that over here in the top right corner. One other thing we need to do in our T is we need to add a create event and that is going to be a piece of code that's our depth ordering depth correction I think I've named this differently about eight times now but it doesn't matter so depth equals y multiplied by negative one select ok select ok uh, one other thing we could do and we need to set this up in our game state object so under game state start game sorry initialize ivars in our switches we can get rid of this intro scene equals true we'll call it quest underscore t party underscore started equals false so that's going to be the trigger that we use and we're going to copy let's just copy this line because that's going to help us a little bit later but that's going to be the trigger that we use to basically enable or disable things in our game so under the object t in the create sorry in the step event let's add a piece of code and in this piece of code we're going to say I'm just going to paste it there, we're just going to say if switches if switches question mark quest underscore t party underscore started closing bracket equals equals true so if the quest has been started what we need to do is we need to say active equals true so if the quest has been started, this object becomes active. So we need to create event, we need to also set active equals false. There we go. So what will happen is, you can imagine that if we saved our game and we loaded our game again, all the objects would be recreated. So the T object on the floor would be created. Um, 
with a active or false. In the step event, however, when we load the game state in, the Tea Party started quest, if it has been started, is set to true, the object becomes active. If the object is active, we also want to draw it on the screen. So in our draw event, we need to say if active equals true, as equals equals, then we need to say draw self. If it's not active, we don't want to draw it. So what we're going to do is in this one is we're going to handle the collisions here because it makes we don't want to clutter our hero with um, collision events. So what we'll do is we'll just add an event when it collides with the hero. Uh, so if the collision is with the party object hero, we can add a script here which says object sorry quest t party and we're going to call this underscore got t equals true. So that means we're also going to need to initialize this as false in our game state object. So under initialize ivars, we need to set got t equals false. And I'm just going to tab these in for cleanliness. There we go. So everything will line up nicely. Got t equals false. So now what we need to do is in our object NPC Bob. So remember in our step event we've got the hero interaction code here. We can say Yes, so let's do this. Um, we'll add a new one. We'll call it var quest equals nothing. So I'm not I'm not too sure if this is going to work because I'm not too familiar with um, game makers activators, but we'll give it a shot and see if it works. So under here we'll say quest equals. So what was it? it was a uh, quest t party started quest underscore t party underscore started. Now back in our base object, we're going to call have another one called var has quest equals false. Back in our Bob event, it's create event, we're going to say has quest equals true. So Bob does have a quest. Now what we need to do in our step event, under hero interaction, where we've established that the hero is interacting, we need to say if has quest. So if has quest equals true, we need to say it's going to be what it was called. It was called quest. So this is what I'm not too sure if this here is going to work, but we'll give it a shot and we'll see if it works. We're going to switch that quest on. So let's see if that works. This may not work. Okay, so we do already do have an error here. Negative one. Oh, it's okay. I see what I've done. Somewhere in my code here, I've called just switches. This needs to be game state dot switches. Where else have I used that? I've used that under here as well. That should be game state dot switches. I think that was all of them. No. Game state dot switches. So anywhere I've typed switches, you need to change it to game state dot switches. Yeah, that should be fine. Now let's see if that works. Okay, so that's worked. So let's go talk to Bob. Hello, I am Bob. So it didn't crash, so it looks like it may have activated that quest for us. So we need a little bit of debug code here to see whether or not this quest has been activated. We can do that by just showing a message. Or we can just say, yeah, let's do it with show. We'll get rid of this debug message up here. And we'll put it down here. Show debug message. We're just going to say in here, quest activated, and then we're just going to do another one, show underscore debug underscore message, and it's just going to be whatever that quest value is. We'll put one before it as well, so we can see what it is before, then the quest gets activated, and then the quest after. So if we talk to Bob, so we've got quest activated, Nulls. That might be because it's a, a, a boolean operation or value. So we may need to put that in a string so we can cast it into a proper string. I know you have to do this with numbers, so it might need to be done with um, booleans as well. Let's give that a shot.
Okay, yeah, so as you can see here, before the quest state is inactive, then after the quest is activated, it's one. So we can get rid of that debug code because we know that's working. We'll keep the quest activated line here and we'll just put a little plus and we'll say quest because that's going to output the string of what quest has been activated. So now if all is well and true then the teapot should appear on our map for us. So if we go into this top right corner we shouldn't see a teapot and then after we activate the quest we should. So let's move up there really quickly. Okay so you can see over here there's no teapot. If we go back and talk to Bob, so I'm just going to run back, we'll talk to Bob. Hello, I am Bob. You see that the quest activated, if we look down here in the debug, quest activated, quest underscore tea party underscore started. So now that has been set to true. If we go up here, we can see that our tea now exists on our map. If we collide with this tea, nothing happens. So now we need to program that event. So go to our object tea, collision with the hero object. Once we've collided with the T, we want to fake pick that T up. So we're just going to say that the quest got T, sorry, quest underscore T party underscore got T equals true. Then we're going to say instance destroy. So we're going to de destroy the T object from the floor so we don't see it anymore. I'm just going to copy this line here because we need that for our quest as well. Let's go back to NPC Bob. We'll change his message from hello I am Bob to hello I am Bob. Oh no, I've lost my T. Could you please help find it? Question mark. So that's going to be our message. And then we're going to have a message. Mm, I don't know how we're going to do this yet. We'll, we'll see how this works. Let's go back to object base and create quest let's call this var quest successful uh, quest condition equals nothing now back in object bobs create event we need to say quest condition equals quest t party got t equals true so that's going to be our quest condition I tell you what, we'll make this a quest NPC. So we'll call this quest message, and we'll call this one here quest success message, and we'll change this to oh gosh, thank you so much for finding my tea. Bob says sarcastically. Um, so the condition for this quest is going to be that quest tea party got tea is set to true. So back in our NPC base we need to have a two new variables. Message, message, message. This is going to be quest message. It's going to be quest success. I think I spelled that right. How did I spell that in this one? It's quest condition. We'll change that to quest quest condition equals undefined quest npc undefined quest condition response there we go so in our step event under hero interaction we're going to get rid of this show message um, so if the npc has a quest else so if he doesn't have a quest we're going to show that message uh, sorry let me undo this let's just say else we show the regular message if it's not a quest NPC. If it is a quest NPC, however, we're going to show. First of all, we want to say if. Uh, how did we do this last time? We said. So we say if game state quest condition. So if the conditions are met, we want to show the success message. Else, we want to start the quest. We want to show the other message, so it's going to be show quest message, show message, this is going to be quest message, and if we succeeded that quest, then we want to show the quest, I think I call it success, I can't remember, I've changed the name too many times, we want to show the quest success, is that what I've called it, condition, that doesn't make sense. Quest success message, there it is. I forgot to create that, so we need to create that as well. 
um, quest message and this is going to be var quest success message equals undefined success message PC. So now quest condition, I've already got quest conditions, so let's get rid of that because that's down here. So quest success message, undefined quest, undefined success, let's change it to quest success message. In our step event, under hero interaction, we're going to call this quest success message. So what happens here? If the, if the hero, sorry, if the NPC has a quest, if that quest has been fulfilled, show the success message, otherwise show the quest message, start the quest, and then show, the, and then just a debug message here. So we're just going to say, we're going to add another debug message up here, and we're going to say quest completed. So let's run the game, let's talk to Bob. Hello, I am Bob. Oh no, I lost my tea. Can you help find it? Okay. So now you've seen our debug messages down here. Quest tea party started. So if we go up here, we should be able to get our teapot. There it is. There we go, we've collected the teapot. Let's go all the way back. So what you'll see is we've actually set ourselves up for basic fetch quests. We speak to Bob this time. Oh gosh, thank you so much for finding my tea. And then you'll see quest completed, quest tea party started. So it's still called started because that's just the name of the event, but you can see that we've completed that quest and every time we speak to him, oh gosh, thank you so much for finding that tea. So this has set us up for setting up basic um, finding uh, and gathering quests. We can, we can expand on this a little bit more later so that we have more options, but for the moment this will do. So once again, um, follow me on Twitter, it's at rm2kdev. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, uh, and then subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, you don't have to, but I really would appreciate it if you did. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching, uh, and I hope this has been helpful.